Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I Don't Work Here Lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled I'm Not in the Military, Shabbat. This was years ago. My husband was in the army on his second enlistment, five or six years total at this point. He'd already been through a couple deployments by this point. We were at a new base overseas and I'd gotten a job at the after-school care facility on post. Well, his unit was getting ready to deploy for six months, so they were in the thick of all that. The chaplain was having a pre-deployment meeting for all the spouses to talk about the changes to expect while our spouses are deployed, from practical issues to emotional stuff to disruptions in routine. Bear in mind, this was back when if you were really lucky, you maybe got a 10-minute call from your spouse once a month, maybe an email as well. Letters were still more common than anything. Now, both my husband and I are pretty easygoing, and we both been through a couple deployments, so I already knew the drill, what to expect, how to manage, etc. So I decided not to bother with the meeting. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic resource for spouses and they would do a post-deployment one as well to help everyone transition back to normal life with their spouses, but I didn't feel the need to attend. A couple days later, my husband shows up at my workplace and tells me he's been ordered by his lieutenant to bring me to the spouse meeting. This was his second lieutenant who was fresh out of OCS, was not prior enlisted, and my husband had socks older than this guy's term of military service. For those who don't know, a second lieutenant is the lowest ranked officer. They're the noobs and it's very common for them to think they know it all and act accordingly. This guy was one of those. I was highly peeved, but not for one moment did I blame my husband. I could tell he was annoyed as well and I knew that since it was a direct order that he had to obey it. I thought for a minute and asked him to hang on a minute so I could talk to my boss. Now school was set to let out soon and they needed me there because of adult slash child ratio requirements but I explained the situation to my boss and told her I'd be back as soon as possible. She understood the situation and said she'd fill in for me till I could get back. She was cool that way and everyone on base, if they weren't military, was the spouse of one due to being on an overseas base, so they all knew and understood when stuff like this came up. Very rarely you get the random GS employee civilian on post but yeah, that was highly unusual. So I left with my husband, but instead of going to the chaplain's meeting I told him to take me to his building where the second lieutenant was. He knew what I was up to and happily complied. Arrived at the lieutenant's office, knocked and went in while my husband stood in the hall. Asked him why he had ordered my husband to fetch me from my job that I was needed at. He rather pompously mansplained to me that this was a required function and that I needed to attend. Oh, I let him have it. I didn't raise my voice much but I informed him in no uncertain terms that he had no authority whatsoever to order me to do anything. I was not in the military, not subject to his whims, and while he may be able to order my husband to come get me he could not order me to go to this meeting. He tried interjecting at this point to say that I needed to go so that I would learn stuff about how to handle my husband being on a deployment. At this point, I nearly blew my top. I've spent more time with my husband being in the field and on deployments than you've spent in the military. My husband does not own me. He cannot force me to do anything and neither can you. I will not be attending this meeting and you will not force my husband to take me there. I am going back to my job and if I hear that you try to make his life miserable because of IT so help me, I will go up your chain of command and make sure you regret IT. Now the building was not full, but it wasn't quite empty either. Oh and the higher ups were in their offices pretty close by. They were also super cool cats. My husband might have been enlisted, but they respected the work he did and he respected them. And this lieutenant had been getting on their nerves as well. So yet they absolutely could hear what was going on, and I'm sure they enjoyed it. By the end of my tirade the second lieutenant was nearly falling over himself to apologize. Sorry ma'am, I apologize ma'am, it won't happen again ma'am. He knew he was in the wrong and by this point, he also knew I'd make a right royal stink if he tried to make me do anything or tried to punish my husband for my actions or lack thereof. I left and my husband took me back to my job, grinning like a fool. I was still pretty enraged at this point but was cooling off pretty rapidly. 
For a few weeks afterward, I actually was concerned that there might be fallout for my husband because of what I did, but there wasn't, at least, not more than the usual BS he dealt with on a daily basis. It was one of the most satisfying moments of my life. Like I said, I'm pretty laid back normally, but I will get steamed on other people's behalf. The problem is that I almost never have the opportunity or the right to get involved, and I recognize that sometimes doing so would definitely make bad worse. So having this opportunity was just golden. The next story is titled Please Get Out of My Car. I've been reading a few stories on here about people getting into cars that aren't their Uber, and it reminded me of my own. This happened a little while ago. I was outside a bar waiting for my boyfriend to pick me up, driving my car, and I see this girl stumbling out of the bar heading towards the road. At the same time, I see my car pull up and head towards it but quickly stop as this girl opens the passenger door of my car and gets in. Now, my poor boyfriend is so confused and is just staring at me through the windscreen, being like WTF do I do, and he tells her that this is not her Uber and that he's picking up his girlfriend. This chick is adamant however, saying this is definitely her Uber because you know, she ordered one and this had to be it. By this point, I'm standing at the passenger side door telling her that she's in the wrong car, but she's now refusing to get out and telling my boyfriend to take her home. People are starting to come out of the bar and are watching this scene unfold. I'm at my wit's end because she's making a scene and telling me to go get your own Uber, and my boyfriend is yelling at her to get out. Finally, her actual Uber rocks up. She gets the notification and awkwardly stumbles out of my car. No apology or anything, and they drive away. To this day, I still find this so bizarre and hilarious. The next story is titled Nothing Shocks Me, I Have Three Sisters. I admit some days I like to be a wild Martian, I wander around looking at items I might want to get with my next paycheck, check out the newest gadgets and games, and kick myself for not waiting another week because an item I bought the previous week is now on sale. As I did my wild Martian shopping, I passed a woman several times, she was clearly vision impaired, I thought maybe she was waiting for a friend. I asked if there was anything I could help her with. I came here with a friend, and she said she would be right back. That was 15 minutes ago. She does this a lot. Not fair to consider it if you ask me. Is there any way I can? I promise I don't bite. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rick. Well, Rick, my name is Connie. I would take you up on your offer, but I have to buy some personal goods and I'm going to need a little help reading the price tags. That's why my friend comes with me. Well, I am willing to help if you are willing to accept. My arm is right here, and if there is anything you need, tell me. We walked around picking up the various items. Rick, I do need to get something. Yeah, Connie, what you need? Well, maybe we should find a woman. The thing is, I need, um, feminine hygiene products. I laughed and said, is that it? Connie, I have three older sisters and have gone to the store for them. Actually, there were times I had no choice. We walked to the pharmacy section. Connie told me which brand she needed. I asked Connie if there was anything she needed other than that. Connie said just needed toothpaste and she'd be done. Dot. We walked to check out and, and as I lead through the line, I helped her put her items on the belt. Connie turned to me and said, does Walmart train to help the disabled customers? I don't know, Connie. I don't work here, but if they don't, they should. Wait, wait, wait. You don't work here. You help me like that. Yeah, why not? Okay, here are some seats. What's your friend's name? I will go to the customer and have her paged. Rick, thanks for helping me. Especially with the girly stuff, Connie laughed. Connie, like I said, I have three sisters. Nothing shocks me. The next story is titled Defeating a Karen with Y. Olens. Background. My grandmother had an emergency, which was easy to fix, new rechargeable batteries for the phone. Now, I work as an electrician for a small company on the other side of town and decided to save gas and time. So I went to a larger tech store about five minutes from where my grandma lives, still in work clothes, no uniform, no logo, no name tag. The store uniform is a black and red shirt with logos and store name on the back, the sleeves, and the front. Cast. K equals Karen. M equals manager. Me equals annoyed 24 year bear. I was looking at rechargeable batteries, trying to remember if my grandma needed Oz or Ez. That's when I heard the words that caused so many nightmares. Excuse me, are you done standing around? I need you to find me Zai's. I just looked at her for a second ready to blow up after 10 hours of entitled clients when it hit me. My niece just discovered the word why. It's frustrating. It's perfect. So I put my goofiest smile on and the following conversation ensued. Me? Why? K. Because it's your job. Me? 
Why? K. Because you work here. Me. Why? K. Now yelling and getting red. You wear work clothes. You work here. You have to help me. Me. Why? K. Stop this BLLSHT or I will get you fired. Me. Why? Now at this point an actual employee came into the aisle to see what the yelling was about. Her face said nope and she left. I continued my act of why Olens with my goofy smile when the employee came back with a manager. M. Ma'am, I have to ask you to stop yelling. It's disturbing other customers. K. Took you long enough. I want this moron fired, or at least written up for how he treated me. M. He doesn't work here. He doesn't even wear a uniform. Why would you think he does work here? Now, you either apologize to him or leave the store. K. Why do I have to apologize? He never said he that doesn't work here. Me, why would I? K, screaming again. You are all morons. I will call corporate about this. With that she stormed up, but I couldn't help myself. Why? After that the manager apologized and bought the batteries for my grandmother. No cops, no coupons, just a fun story. There is so much we can learn from little kids. The next story is titled Lady Tries to Get Me Fired When I Don't Clean Up a Rotting Carcass for Her. Cast. K equals Karen and me equals me so. I'm working at my local fire department in their internship program. My job is to put up beach flags and check the flags regularly based on the weather. If you don't know what I mean by beach flags, they're colored flags that symbolize the level of danger that the water poses. Green equals safe, yellow equals caution, and red equals don't swim. I live in a tourist town along one of the Great Lakes, so there are a lot of entitled tourists that visit. The process of checking the flags is to drive by the beaches and evaluate if the color of the flag matches the current water conditions. The story starts with me going about my normal business. I'm driving along one of the beaches, just doing my job. It was a particularly hot day out that day, so there were many people swimming. As I'm about to leave and go to the next beach, I get signaled down by the Karen. I pull over and see what she needs from me. K. Okay. Hello? Excuse me. You look like a city worker. Can you help me? I'm driving a mule, which is a glorified golf cart, and wearing a reflective vest, so I guess that's where she got that from me. Cluelessly, sure, what is it? K. I've been calling the city maintenance department for the past hour trying to get someone down here, and you just about drove away. Your supervisor will be hearing about this. Me. I'm sorry about that, but I don't work for the city. What seems to be the problem? I guess I might work for the city, but I'm officially employed by the fire department. K. There's a dead fish on the shore barely 10 feet from where my family is trying to enjoy our vacation. Get rid of it. Me. I can't take care of that, but I can try and get a hold of who can. K. No, I've been calling for an hour now. My family's vacation is being ruined because of you now. Me. I'm sorry, but this is not my job. I'm not a maintenance person. I put up the beach flags. K. I don't care. Go clean that up before I decide you don't work here anymore. I then gave her the number to our department and promptly left her in the dust. While I was leaving and heading to the next beach, I gave my boss a call and a heads up about the Mozilla that was about to call him and decide I don't work for him anymore. My boss answered her call shortly after I warned him about her and he chewed her out for harassing me and thinking that she could fire any teenager she wanted to. Him and I had a good laugh about that later on. The next story is titled I don't work here but I am banning you from the store. This just happened 20 minutes ago and still laughing about it. I was in the bullseye store with the red vests and shirts. I was picking up a few office supplies. I managed three restaurants and one of the office's supplies ran low on staples and printing paper. And the supply truck won't be until the end of the month. I gathered the items I needed and headed to the check lanes. I heard a banshee like shrill screaming, hey, hey you. I look around and this lady has a person who really does work there cornered and the poor girl looked to be on the verge of tears. SC. Screaming customer re, real employee me, yours truly. SC. Yes. You. Mr. Manager. Come here and discipline your employee she refuses to help me and was very rude and called me some very bad names. Now I have read enough of these I don't work here posts and always wondered why no does this. So I give a shot. Me to re. Is this true? Were you rude to this lovely piece of humanity? which made the her kind of giggle. Re, no I just told her I'm on my way home, I just finished my shift. If she needs help, 
She can ask someone else who would be more than happy and clocked in. When I told her this she reached for me, I backed off. I don't like strangers touching me, and I never insulted her. SC, high pitch shrill that would shatter crystal, liar. You call me all sorts of bad words. When I find my husband, he will have you fired if you don't do something about it. Me, lady, I am the district manager. I will ask you to calm down if you don't I'm going to have to ask you to leave the store. SC, what? Well I'm just very upset you stupid, F word, it's been most distressful. In all my years I have never been treated so horribly. Me, ma'am I'm sorry but you aren't settling down, I'm going to have to ask you excuse yourself from the premises or be escorted by security. Pull out my phone speed dial miss my messages. SC, but my husband. Me, go to customer service desk page your husband and tell him you will be waiting outside for him while he does s shopping. Now leave this store immediately. I pretend to talk to security on the phone. Yes, we have an unruly customer who needs to be escorted from the store. SC throws what she has on the floor and leaves screaming, yelling, threatening to sue and shut the store down. I turn to Ree and ask if she is okay. She tells me yeah. She didn't know I was in the store but glad I was. Re, I hope I'm not in any trouble. I just work a double shift I just want to go home. I am extremely tired and hungry. Me? No you're not in trouble. I don't even work here. After a second or two it sinks in what I said and Re begins to laughing uncontrollably. I told her I manage the restaurant up the street and she is welcome to come in and have a free meal on my dime. As I leave for the restaurant, I walk through the parking lot and see the screaming banshee customer sitting in a pickup truck on her cell phone. I could hear her muffled screams and crying in figure, I better get the hell out Todd Dodge. Re did come into the restaurant to thank me. I told her the offer for the free meal is still good. She turned me up on it but tipped the server really well even though it was a free meal. We talked and laughed about the banshee and she laughed even harder when I told her Re about seeing her sitting in the truck. I told her this is definitely going on Reddit. Re says she loves these posts and will be looking for it. So, hey Kate, if you're reading this you are Reddit famous now, maybe someone will turn this into a YouTube video. The next story is titled No Words Were Needed. I have been paranoid about being mistaken for an employee since I started reading r slash, I don't work here lady, even had nightmares about it. I'm usually pretty careful, but last month I slipped up. It was mid-December, so the Christmas shopping frenzy was in full swing. I had already done mine on Cyber Monday, but that particular morning, I had fed my cat the last crumbs at the bottom of the bag and really needed to stop after work to get cat food among other absolute essentials. I stopped at the local Blue Vest place, because it was my only chance to grab everything I needed in one stop. As soon as I stepped through the doors, I felt eyes on me. Intensely. Then it dawned on me. I had worn my Blue Company polo today. Same shade and everything. Save for a print of the healthcare company I work for on the right breast pocket. I resolved to get in, at least get the cat food, no kitty of mine goes hungry, stay low key and get out. I stayed out of the main aisles. I didn't make eye contact with anyone. If somebody started approaching me, I quickly ducked around a corner. I was killing it. I had everything but the cat food when I finally ran into the boss of this level. There were several people in the cat food aisle, including an older man. He was visibly confused and upset and was shuffling through cat food bags. They quite obviously didn't have his brand on display. I approached slowly and quietly like a lioness stalking prey through the tall grass of the savannah. I reached around the man and grabbed the kitty kibble. I thought I was home free, but when I dropped the bag in my hand basket, the old guy finally noticed me. He locked eyes with me. He took a breath and was preparing to say something probably along the lines of, hey, could you check the back for blah blah brand? If he asked you for help, other customers would hear, and at that point it might as well be sharks drawn to blood in the water. I took a gamble, before a sound escaped him. I quickly put my finger to my lips indicating for him to shush. The gambit paid off. Rather than get incensed at the audacity of the gesture to a customer, he was confused and curious. I shook my head and pointed to the logo on my shirt. He peered down through his bifocals, said a simple HM. Okay. And he went on his way. No real words exchanged. I hauled it through the back aisles to the cash registers, paid, and got the heck out of there without any more unnecessary human contact. Yeah, I might have social anxiety issues. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.